All right, everyone, welcome to another edition of The Tape. This is our season two premiere here on Connect TV. Man, can you believe we're on our season two premiere? Remember like way back a year ago, we was on season one, now we're season two. Thank you all for watching us. You could have been anywhere else, but you came and watched us here on The Take. Once again, join in the conversation. Like us, subscribe to Connect TV for anything like shows like the tape, shows like viral. So glad you're here. Let's get started with the big story. The big story this week, man, the big story is the world has lost a true giant. And I'm talking about Senator John McCain of Arizona. John McCain passed away last week at the age of 81 due to brain cancer. He was battling for a year and he stopped remissions. And now John McCain uh, leaves a legacy behind of true pa patriotism, true honor, true grit as being United States Senator. McCain started his career so long ago as a prisoner of war, a war hero, I meant to say a war hero. And he became a prisoner of war during the Vietnam um, War. And he led the United States Senate with bipartisanship. Let's take a brief moment back in John McCain's incredible career. Take a look. McCain was born August 29th, 1936 at a naval base in the Panama Canal Zone. His father and grandfather both named John and both in service. Wartime commanders John McCain's fate was laid before him. I remember when my dad's friends would be over when I was very young and they'd say, what class is he gonna be? Not. Was he going to the Naval Academy or not? What class would he be? He would attend the Naval Academy in Annapolis in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. He would graduate part of the class of 1958. Here, heading to flight school in Pensacola, Florida, he would later volunteer to drop bombs on targets in North Vietnam during the war. That's where the sound of the guns were, and we wanted to ride to it. It is what we train for and what our mission is. At 31 years old, aboard the aircraft carrier Oriskany, flying an A-4 Skyhawk on his 23rd run. Just as he released a bomb, an enemy missile takes a wing off his bomber. He ejects, breaking both his arms and one leg, his bomber washing ashore. McCain would land in a lake in the center of the city of Hanoi. The Vietnamese would pull him out of the water and capture him. They would stab him, beat him, and then take him to a prison camp, later known as the Hanoi Hilton. Filmed as a POW, he was asked his name. What is your name? Lieutenant Commander John McCain. Unable to use his hands, he had to be fed by his captors. His irreverence, a source of strength to his fellow prisoners. How is your food? It's not like Paris. <laughs> I eat it. Deteriorating in strength and delirious with pain for months, the Vietnamese only treated his wounds after they realized he was the son of a famous admiral. I think you have a famous name. Yes. The Vietnamese would have an offer. They would tell him he could go home. They hoped it would be a PR coup for them, given how famous his family was. But McCain would refuse. He told them he didn't want to break the U.S. military code of conduct for POWs. The first man captured must be the first man out. I badly wanted to go home. I was tired and sick. McCain would stay another four years as a POW, half of that in solitary confinement. In 1973, 591 POWs were released, and John McCain was one of them. Commander John McCain. A salute and home on American soil. Reunited with his family, deciding to serve his country in a new way. I'm announcing today my decision to become a candidate. For Elected to the House in 1982, and to the Senate four years later. He would run for president in 2000 and again in 2008. Campaigning against then-Senator Barack Obama, McCain would do the unthinkable in today's politics. He defended his opponent. I can't trust Obama. I, I have read about him, and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma no, ma he's a... 
He's a, he's a decent family man, citizen, that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues, and that's what this campaign is all about. He's not. Thank you. And it was a year ago he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, returning to the Senate floor just days after brain surgery, walking in to a standing ovation, casting that deciding thumbs-down vote on the effort to repeal Obamacare without a replacement. In one of his final public appearances, John McCain joining his daughter, Megan. I love you so much. John McCain spent his final months with family, with friends, and reflecting in his autobiography on the power of humanity, the power of what we all have in common. Before I leave, I'd like to see our politics begin to return to the purposes and practices that distinguish our history from the history of other nations. I'd like to see us recover our sense that we are more alike than different. All right, John McCain was indeed a true maverick, and he will be missed in America, the country. He said himself, he lived, he died as an American, and that's what the true thing is about. You live in this country, you die as this country. You know, the politics that him and President Trump, they disagreed on policies and principles, but Hey, John McCain lived his life and lived his life his own way, his own terms. And we salute you, John McCain. But also, don't forget, if you're watching the tape right now, you can watch a recap of John McCain on viral this week where yesterday's episode was dedicated to John McCain on his incredible life story. So that's viral. Quick plug right there for viral on this season finale. So, hey. <laughs> All right, on talk shows, talk shows this week. On the fourth hour of today's show, Kathleen and, well, it would be Kathleen and Hola's show, but Hola and Shanae Rhymes got to explaining why Madonna didn't give her proper respects to the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, during the VMAs, where Madonna made it all about herself. Well, take a look and see and watch for yourself. Madonna is responding to, remember the dust up yesterday at the MTV? Oh, her Aretha the other day tribute. She got yes. up and she said she didn't realize, well, she got up to speak at the MTV Awards with a big picture of Aretha Franklin and told a story. And people were complaining on Twitter saying, wait, the story wasn't really about Aretha, it was about Madonna. Mm -hmm. And then it had a little Aretha in it. Well, this is what Madonna posted on Insta. She says, I was asked to present video of the year by MTV. And then they asked me to share any anecdotes I had in my career connected to Aretha Franklin. I shared a part of my journey and thanked Aretha for inspiring me along the way. I did not intend to do a tribute to her. That would be impossible in two minutes with all the noise and tinsel of an award show. I could never do her justice in this context or environment. She goes on to say, unfortunately, most people have short attention spans and are so quick to judge. Hmm. I mean, she, it sounded like, well, it was kind of a last minute, at least announcement that she was going to be doing the right. video of the year. So I wonder if they did say to her, you know, you're such a huge pop icon. Why don't you just say a couple of words about Aretha? Right. Because it would be a shame if the whole award show went and nobody said anything about her. That's true. But I think I get what she was trying to say. But I also think that sometimes, again, that's when you have to be still <laughs> And almost self-aware and yeah. think about the moment and think, okay, it's not about me. It's okay to share a little anecdote about Aretha, but then bring it back to Aretha. Yeah. And so I think people yeah. felt like that was fine, but then it, it didn't go back to her. It was about you. Yeah. Hey, ladies, you're not getting the big story, the big picture. Well, you know, hey, Aretha Franklin, so celebrate her life the way she did. You know, Madonna come out there. You think Madonna's going to give Aretha her props, and then Madonna turns around and turns it around to her and talk about her. It's not me, me, me. It's about we, we, we. It's about Rita, not you, Madonna. You're not literally deceased yet, but you you know, you're 60 years old and you could have done a heck of a performance and you could have sparred on Rita Franklin a little bit better. And then she started blaming the, blaming the MTV for not prepping her. Wait, you can't say that out of the blue impromptu in a moment like you know, I get sometimes with some people um, that you generally love or dislike, but sometimes you can find a good in somebody. They might be doing it evil, treacherous, but at the same time, things you have to, you know, rationalize and go back to the basis and say, you know what, this person did all this crazy stuff, 
But at the end of the day, he at least did this because you saw it. You saw it. You saw it. <laughs> so, um, hey, here with him. Meanwhile, on Good Morning America, the anchors talked about since singer Mariah Carey went on a shark vacation, the shark spotted. She spotted a shark near her kids and she felt the obvious. Take a look. Okay, this is not okay. I know it's a shark that I'm, I'm not supposed to be scared, but I'm scared. I'm upset. I'm upset. I would be upset too. <laughs> Things apparently calmed down after that. She uh, shared this picture of her and her twins, Moroccan and Monroe, admiring the beautiful sunset. Carrie soon will be heading back to continue her Las Vegas residency at Caesars Palace through mid-September. Mariah Carey, the Sharks, <laughs> the Sharks probably will try to audition for Mariah with their singing and stuff, with their teeth. <laughs> with their teeth. <laughs> All right, speaking of that, uh, in um, celebrity news, business mogul Oprah Winfrey is finna announce that she's doing a new chain of frozen food aisles. Oprah says she's gonna do frozen food such as cauliflower pizza and many other numerous things since her line of um, pantries such as selling soups and selling um, vegetables and stuff. That's the one thing about Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey went from being a poor little black girl in Mississippi, became a, um, a TV show host in Baltimore, and then became national in Chicago, with her own talk show host, went and did her own network own, and now she's a food, a food, you know, business proprietor or something like that. Get into the food, frozen fruit out. Next thing you know, Oprah gonna be like this. <laughs> Oprah like this. Line of Iron Line, you get a food, you get a pizza, you get a pizza, you get a pizza. Oprah's gonna be doing all that frozen fruit, and that that damn frozen fruit is gonna be so jacked and so jam packed that everybody gonna be like, man, man, it's the, it's the cauliflower pizza, the crust. I know, I don't want that either. <laughs> Also, in celebrity news, singer R.I. Grande appeared on Good Morning America and sat down with Michael Scrahan to talk about her her music, the crisis that she's having, and um, the the little the, you know the little shooting that was having a concert, and her love life. And R.I. Grande explains it all. Watch this. About somebody yeah. and put on your album and your love is so sincere. It, it's fun to, I'll be honest, very fun to watch. Yeah. Because most people are very. Um, We're so annoying, huh? No, it's fun to it watch. It must be the worst. You know what? What did you say when we first <laughs> it sat here? It must be the worst. You say you're living your best life. <laughs> yeah. You're living your best life. You're yeah, not letting I'm, anyone I'm else's grateful. opinion or, of what your love should be hold your back. Oh, I gosh. love that about it. Oh, thank you. I'm just grateful, enjoying every minute because life's too short. When you get married. When am I getting married? Uh, ew, why did I say married like that? I go, when am I getting married? That's not how I talk. I'm sorry, I don't know how that happened. I'm really tired. Is it soon? <laughs> no, no. And no, we're gonna like take our time to plan it. We've been like planning and uh, my friends and I, my mom and everybody have been like brainstorming and uh, you know, sharing ideas and stuff. And it's, it's really fun. Like I work so much. I've never like spent this much time or energy like planning something personal that like feeds my soul so much in my heart. I'm gonna cry. I'm just so excited. But like, it's sick. It's really fun. But no, it's not soon. Soon. It's gonna be like next year. Ariana Grande living her best life. <laughs> it's like living my best life. Ain't no death about to be bitches. Yeah, Era Grande got music, sweeter. Um, just, just everything Era Grande and got a love life. I don't know if they serious or not, huh, Pete Davidson. Because that came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. I don't know, but hey, to each his own. <laughs> All right, we're, we'll be right back with a take after this.
Welcome back to The Take, season two premiere. I'm your host as always, Ken Dix, joining the conversation here on Connect TV. Man, man, don't forget to use the hashtag take for make it leave a comment. You can subscribe to our Connect TV channel. Yeah, you can even like this channel, like this show if you liked it. You know, hey, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no doubt about it. You know, we're back. We got better lighting, we got better equipment. We're back. Yeah, we got even better graphics on Connect TV. I can't even deny that. <laughs> All right, join in that conversation using the hashtag take. All right, let's get back to basis with news is on news is this week. Man, the obvious. Now, on this affiliate station on local 24 in Memphis, Tan to say, man, this this little political pundit keeps talking so country overtones and stuff that you can't help but to, you know, see his own sudden asset and sudden twang. My first thought is, am I on that blacklist? I would think. Well, you probably should be. Yeah. I probably should be. <laughs> I, I mean, because I'm really not a fan of that administration, you know. Uh, they've done a lot of bad things. Uh, right. Not the police, but the administration. Uh, but what I think it, to, what the funny thing to me is, you know, it, it, when you look at it in a political view, these were all the same people that Jim Strickland got out there and was helping take these statues down and everything. Now they done turned on him. You see what I'm saying? So you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like tar. You, the more you mess with it, the more you get on you. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, know, I, know you, I know what you're saying, Jerry, but uh, uh, you're way point. off base. Commissioner Bill, something with that little southern twang, that southern dialect. They go next thing you know, it's gonna be his show. Welcome to the Bell Show. Well, Country Bell coming up next. But I was going to say some little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. But in the same time, I'm just talking just on my neck, just talking on my neck, just talking on my neck. You're just talking on my neck. Just, I can't help I'm country. Look at me. Look at me, man. Look at me. But I got a lot of good country. But... Oh, God. <laughs> when you think of that, sometimes you have to think about, man. I used to have a country accent. I, I used to when I was early on, and then it kind of died down. Now I'm not speaking so country. I'm speaking more city than country. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it be sometimes. Like, you got to look at it twice and, like, look at it and think about, like, okay, am I speaking more country than I am speaking more city? <laughs> you know? It, it just happens like that. It happens. It happens. All right. On the political rundown this week, man, we kick out with a bang. Every time we do the political rundown, it's always about President Trump. He always stays in the news. He always do something rational and crazy and stuff. Now we know that he did this with um, McCain when the reporters asked him about this. He broke his silence, expressing appreciation for John McCain's service. We uh, very much appreciate everything that Senator McCain has done for our country. For the president, it was a rare reversal. He had avoided any comment on McCain's legacy, but finally bowed to public pressure and issued a statement. Despite our differences on policy and politics, I respect Senator John McCain's service to our country. Earlier on Monday, I tried to get the president to say something, anything, about McCain and his legacy. Mr. President, do you have any thoughts on John McCain? Do you have any thoughts at all about John McCain? Do, 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 do you believe John McCain was a hero, sir? Yes, let's go. Thank you. Nothing at all about John McCain. After McCain died, the president nixed the idea of putting out a statement honoring his legacy. The White House flag was lowered to half staff late Saturday, but it was raised again just over 24 hours later. It is such pettiness, such pettiness, and a reaction to a real American hero. The American Legion and the VFW, both representing millions of American veterans, appealed directly to the president to once again lower the flags to half staff. And yeah, they kept asking about John McCain. He put out a uh, message and um, he left, he, he, he demanded the um, flags to be up in the White House, but everybody around, everywhere else in Washington was half staff for respect for John McCain. He is so mean and so bitter and so shady that I'm I'm going to show John McCain his last and final days. 
be on this earth by not just giving him the proper respect that he deserves. Hey, Miss President, the old, and then the war, um, then the um, the the little war um, war fundings had to come in and say, hey, show the man some respect. Maybe you didn't like him. So, I don't care. I'm Donald Trump. I'm the president of the United States. Who's gonna tell me so? Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I know they had a love and hate relationship, <laughs> but he also got a love and hate relationship with the press. So Donna kept Donna. You keep tweeting, and you can't get you. You get mad with them all the time. So they're gonna keep doing their jobs, and they're gonna keep reporting what you're saying, and then you got to go back and backpedal and what you're saying and all that. Well, the president appeared on his favorite press show, Fox News, and aired his grievances about. The press treat him unfairly, his cabinet not doing what he wants, hashtag Jeff Sessions, and himself. Give him all that. Just watch and see for yourself. Take a look. I guess my whole life has been this way. Somebody said, oh, gee, this is always some, such yeah. controversy. And I don't know. I've always had controversy in my life, and I've always succeeded. I've always won. I've always won. It was controversial when I ran, and I won. And now the country is doing better than it's ever done. You know, we have the best economy we've ever had in the history of our country. And more jobs today, literally today, we have more jobs, more people working in the United States than ever before in the history of our country. Uh, he said one story, said you didn't know anything about the payments. No. And now he's saying that you directed him to make these payments. Did you direct him to make he these payments? He made the deal, he made the deals. And by the way, he played to two counts that aren't a crime which nobody understands. Uh, I watched a number of shows. Sometimes you get some pretty good information by watching shows. Those two counts aren't even a crime. They weren't campaign finance. Did, did you know about the payments? Uh, later on, I knew. He had a massive campaign violation, but he had a different attorney general, and they viewed it a lot differently. You know, we have somebody that they seem to like to go after a lot of Republicans. You know, they make up stories. People make up stories. This whole thing about uh, flipping, they call it. I know all about flipping for 30, 40 years. I've been watching flippers. Everything's wonderful. And then they get 10 years in jail and they, they flip on whoever the next highest mm -hmm. one is or as high as you can go. Mm -hmm. it, it almost ought to be outlawed. It's not fair. Because if somebody's going to give, spend five years like Michael Cohn or 10 years or 15 years in jail because of a taxi cab industry, because he defrauded some bank, uh, the last two were the tiny ones. You know, campaign violations are considered not a big deal, mm -hmm. frankly. That the people that worked for Hillary Clinton, I mean, look at the crimes that Clinton did with the emails, and she deletes 33,000 emails after she gets a subpoena from Congress, and, and this Justice Department does nothing about it? and all of the other crimes that they've done. And they don't, look at Podesta. Podesta was supposed to be Manafort or on steroids. They made him close up his firm. He was going to be indicted the next day, we heard. Never happened. Mm. Instead, they would go after Manafort. So my campaign is very simple. The Pfizer report, the phony fake. Rosenstein signed the last Pfizer report. Uh, it bothers me, it's always Will you fire me. him, will you fire Sessions? Well, I'll tell you what. As I've said, I wanted to stay uninvolved, but when everybody sees what's going on in the Justice Department, I always put justice now with quotes, it's a very, very sad day. Jeff Sessions recused himself, which he shouldn't have done, or he should have told me. Even my enemies say that Jeff Sessions should have told you that he was gonna recuse himself and then you wouldn't have put him in. He took the job and then he said, I'm going to recuse myself. I said, what kind of a man is this? And by the way, he was on the campaign. You know, the only reason I gave him the job because I felt loyalty. He was an original supporter. Mm -hmm. He was on the campaign. He knows there was no collusion. And what's come out of Manafort? No collusion. What's come out of Michael Cohn? No collusion. This is stuff that they got. How about with Michael Cohn, in all fairness to him, they raid his office at six o'clock in the morning? And how about with Manafort? They raid his home at like five in the morning, I think on a weekend, and his wife is in bed and they go in with guns? Yeah. This is an Al Capone. One thing about this president, he talked about what he wants to do 
and how he wants to do it. And he still focuses in the focal point around himself. So president wants Fox News to be Trump news and wants CNN to be TNN and um, wants ABC to be TBC. And that's like TBC yogurt, that ice cream. <laughs> CBS to TBS. Uh, ain't that is a network called TBS? Yeah, but they're not affiliated with Trump. They're more like a comedy slash um, movie network. He would love it on TBS. <laughs> All right, moving over to the reality show clip down. All right, on the reality show clip down this week, Braxton family values before the sisters left the show and walked out. Tony and her so-called boyfriend Birdman went to dinner. And they began to conversate, and Birdman started speaking in native tongue. You got to take a look and see what he said. Watch this. He called me the other day, and he asked me to meet with him in New Orleans just to relax and forget about work and the wedding. You know, I just want to have fun. This is nice. This is like traditional New Orleans. Yeah, that's I it. like it. Is the food good? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Thank you for coming again. Of course, Lord. thank you for having me. Definitely. This is beautiful. I love it here. I love New Orleans. You rented this whole place? Yeah. No one else is here but us? That's all right with you. That's, I love it. Like, what's that? What's that sound? Probably a boat or something. Oh, we're by the water. Yeah, not too far. From. I didn't know that. Oh. You're going to hear that all night to 3, 4, 5 in the morning. Okay. Every morning. I think the great thing about being, being in our relationship is that we're the yin and the yang. We're peanut butter and jelly. We, we're, we're completely different, but we go together and we balance each other. He helps me get in tune with my intuition, I would say. And I, I think I help him with his softer side. You don't always got to keep a G. Like, it's okay to be human. You don't always have to be a guy. and be like, whoa, 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 whoop, whoop. You don't always have to be whoop, whooping all the time, you know? How are you today? My name's Chris. I'll be taking care of you all today. Okay, perfect. I had this dream a couple weeks ago. I forgot the name of it. Something mule. A Moscow mule. Moscow mule. Moscow. I would like to try that. Can I try that? I'm going to yeah. try that. Okay. You want Tito's with it? Yeah. I'm going to need how busy to be a part of what I'm doing. You said what? I'm going to need how busy to be a part of what I'm doing. You said what? Hot. You're hot? How busy. Most of the time, he'll say something and I'll say, what, what does that mean? What does that mean, babe? Oh, no, T, that means the whoop, whoop to the whoop, whoop. I'm like, well, first of all, let's start with whoop. What does whoop mean? I said, well, whoop is a compound word that can be used any way. It could be a verb, it could be a noun, it could be a prepositional phrase, whatever you want. And I'm like, okay, that can mean anything. But I found out you can't say hi. You can't use whoop to say hi. I thought, I was like, whoop. He was like, no, no, babe, let's, you know, all right, say, just say hi. Oh, man, bird man, speaking in that native tongue. Oh, oh, mind you, I got, I can speak in native tongue too. Watch this. What you doing, Simi? Where is Simi? I know, I know, for real. What you doing? Uh huh. Yeah. Ah uh -huh. Yeah. You know what I see. You know. You know. We me 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 Yeah <laughs> I can speak in data tongue just like Birdman. One thing about Birdman, man, like take take a look at what this this member moment with Birdman right here. Yeah, you better put some respect on my name. You got that respect. You gotta put some respect. Birdman, one minute, he be Birdman be playing working folks, and they these folks don't out here don't know. People, when you see Birdman, he working you. When he's talking to that native tongue, that's what he speaks like. But then when he gets in public, well, no, 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 we be a What in the a Creole word or something? Creole language. That's what we call it. Creole, Creole language. Like, you know, Creole and New Orleans, some shit like that. <laughs> uh, I can't speak, you know, hey, that's 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 one thing about Birdman. But also, anyway, you know, since, speaking of that show, 
since Tracy still decided to stay on the show, <laughs> and you won't believe she gets paired with the uh, least unlikely Miss uh, Misfit Toys that you ever thought would be on the show. Take a look at this. Go got a good surprise when I pulled up on that wagon. <laughs> The reason why I had to ride the wagon is because I can't ride the horses. That's why. <laughs> oh, and what in the major parts doing on Braxton Family Value? Ain't she supposed to be on another network? Ain't she recently got fired from the Real House of Atlanta? And now she really weasel her way into them Braxton Family Values. What kind of relationship do she know Trina? Did her and Trina are best friends, are they acquaintances? Turns out that We TV brought her brought her as an added an asset to the show. What the fuck um Trade you gonna do being an asset to the show? So let's align let's get to lighten up a little bit more with this recent interview Tracy and Phaedra did. Take a look. And uh, you know, we've always been in crossing of seeing each other. Yeah. So when, you know, the the show was on a little hiatus. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I when they walked out. To, I continued <laughs> to work, <laughs> and um, Phaedra was contacted. Phaedra was like, "Of course, Tracy, I would love to do some adventures with you." So you know, yes. we got together, and yes. we've been having a ball since. So you were thinking about doing your own show with Phaedra? Is that it? While the, while the the family was taking a little break from one another? Well, well. Well, I, we just knew a DMB diva and a Southern Belle sweetie uh -huh. would cause a lot of chaos. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we're all about it. At a cattle yes. ranch. Oh, At a yeah. cattle ranch. With, with Flavor Flav. With, with Flavor Flav. And New York. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. You and like also Kim. Kim. Kim Whitley. Kim Whitley with, with the So, studio, honey, it's so. a motley crew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a some antics, I would imagine. Oh, yes. too, my God. Right? Oh, my goodness. So, we what happens when the sisters find out what you two are up to? They're like, okay, we're going back to work. Well, that's not how it happened. <laughs> how what happened, happened was, <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I don't get into their business and they don't get into mine. So Amen. they decided they was coming back. I don't know what else is going on. They only my sisters, you know. When you put a lot of business things in in a mixture of a family, you know, a, um, a, a family setting, it turns to be messy. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I was so, concerned because, you know, a lot of these re reality shows, Either they create the drama and mm -hmm. then it really spills into the real life and can really have, you know, some yeah. harmful effects on your family life. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. are, are, are you guys okay as a family? Oh, we're, we're fine as a family. Okay. We talk, you know, we giggle and laugh, but we just don't talk about business. Mm -hmm. Talking about business right now is not a. But like even with Tony thing. and planning the oh. wedding, you're involved. Mm -hmm. with oh, yeah. All that Everything. And... Yeah. But you're not going on the road with them to say? No. Oh. Because you got your own thing going on. I have on. my own mm -hmm. thing You're going doing on. You. Yes. She has this a new Friday. Album. Yeah, it's coming and out it's this awesome. Friday. What's Yay! It all good. Mm -hmm. On Earth. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Have Excited. a clip. Let's, okay. let's take a peek. <laughs> Are the both of them in this clip? I don't know. But... Then on top of that, you got Kim Whitley. You got New York. You got Flavor <laughs> Flay. What the? If they turn Blast of Fat Values into the reality show, um, something? I don't know, reality show all stars? This ain't um this ain't celebrity boot camp, marriage camp, or whatever the hell that show is, celebrity marriage boot camp. I don't get it. I don't get why are you bringing stars from different shows you got from different networks over to this network? I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And hey, we everyone will be watching to see and be curious about that. Alright. And finally. Finally, the viral video of the week. We've got two viral videos a week. All right, school is back in session now. And, and this school, we just got by this school in Memphis, Tennessee again. And they started school with a bang. Take a look. Love it here. <laughs> a fight already broken out in school. School just got back. They ain't trying to learn how to read, 
nor right. They just want to fight. And, and fight indeed that they did. And so, is it going to be Fight Club or is it going to be this new revolution called the Ratchet Revolution? Where, I don't know, if, if you like the, if you, you, you know, hey, screw the reading and the books and all the arithmetic. I just want to fight. I just want to gain some reputation. Hey, if it works, it works. But you know, I, I would thought school would have been more important, like education. But hey, now these days, it's more about it's all it's all in the fight. It's the, <laughs> the dog in the fight. Dog in the fight. And the last but least, man, you gotta look at this. But this little three-year-old girl gets so sassy that she don't even know what she's talking about. Take a look. Come in here. Look. Now, look. Well, you. you in time out. Look. My bracelet came off. I'll put it back on. Mm. You in time out. There's no excuse. You see, you're you supposed to be back in time out. I didn't say get out. You and Jayla in time out. Well, let me tell you this, Linda. My name ain't Linda. So you sit right there in time out, little bad little girl. No, let me tell you something. No, don't if tell I, me. If I was in here, I would surely take a day off from <laughs> you and then a day off from these kids. I'm out of the classroom. I'm just done with you. I'm done with you too, but you in time out. Oh, let me tell you something, honey. This is not going to You're going to be in time out? Oh. That's why you in time out right I'm now. I'm sick still. I think so. Well, when I get up out of town and go to bed, I will be glad to go home and enjoy the rest of my life. And I completely quit school because all of you. You know, man, sassy, 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 sassy little girl. Yeah, smart because she been held in the cubby. Hell, in time out time. And she timed, she timed out, all right. Time out with talking with some sense. <laughs> talking like she about to go to get in a fight with the little teacher herself. And the teacher better be a little bit careful because when the girl gets a little certain age, the girl will come back and try to want to swing blows. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> it's going to be funny. All right, that does it. For the take season two, I am so glad that you joined us. You could have been anywhere else, but you came here to watch the take. And oh man, but do me this favor. You can like, share, subscribe to Connect TV because we're only matter growing. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time here on the take.